for hearing us as we are going to start to praise the Lord. Before we get into that, I am going to ask uh, our speaker for this morning. Our speaker is none other but Sister Glenda Lamfort. Sister Glenda Lamfort is our sister here. She's one powerful sister who once established a school, an Adventist school called Oram here in Bloemfontein. But right now she is serving at Bethel College with her husband, uh, Brother H H Henry Lamfort. Sister, sister Glenda, this is your time. May God use you for his glory. Good morning, Sister Zodwa. Good morning, everybody. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank you. Okay. And the video, is it showing? Okay. Yeah. All right. Good morning, family of God. Thank you, Sister Zodwa, for the welcome and for the beautiful psalm and for the song while we were singing with you to God be the glory. I'm delighted to share the word with you this morning. I'm going to be brief so that more time can be spent in expressing thanks and praises to God. So I'm going to be sticking to my script so that I don't waste any time. For the title this morning of, of our message, I've had numerous titles, but I've settled on my utmost for his highest. Some of you might know the book by Oswald Chambers, with this title. And so I borrowed, without his permission, I borrowed the title of the message, My Utmost for His Highest. Our verse for consideration is taken from 2 Corinthians 9, verse 15. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 15. And it says, Thanks be unto God for his indescribable gift. When, when someone gives you a gift, and you feel loved, valued, and accepted, then receiving gifts, according to Dr. Gary Chapman, is your love language. Gentlemen, when nothing was done to silence her car's squealing brakes, and the dishes are constantly unwashed, and she's unhappy, you shouldn't bother giving your wife a gift because it will not make her feel loved and cherished because her love language is acts of service and not receiving gifts. But everyone loves a gift nonetheless, even though they are not all received in the same spirit. What determines the value of a gift? Or an, there's a number of reasons, they say. The need it fulfills, the price of the gift, the extent to which the giver went to, to give the gift, and of course, who the special person was who gave the gift, irrespective of the price, these all determine the value of the gift. Let's go back to our verse we read earlier. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul ends chapter 9 with these words. Thank God for his indescribable gift. Paul ends um, this, this with these words for these words and it says in the new english version thanks be to god for his indescribable gift the new living translation calls it the gift too wonderful for words the english standard version calls it the priceless gift the good the god's word translation prefers the gift that words cannot describe and the weymouth new testament says the unspeakably precious gift what is this gift that Paul is thanking God for? In this letter to the Corinthians, Paul encourages the Corinthians to continue giving their gifts to the ministry. He reminds them of how he had been boasting to the Macedonians about their generosity. Now he asks them to prepare their gifts ahead of time for collection, and then he encourages them to give willingly, cheerfully, and not grudgingly. He reminds them in verse 6 that the one who gives sparingly will reap sparingly and the one who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. The Apostle Paul also promised them to be cheerful in their acts of giving because God loves a cheerful giver, he says. In the verses that follow, he blesses them and reminds the Corinthian believers that because of their generosity, many thanksgivings will go up to God. And then he ends the chapter with these words, 
thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, the gift too priceless for words, the gift that words have no power to express. While Paul doesn't mention who or what the gift is, it's as if he says, thank you, brethren, for your special sacrificial gifts. But keep in mind that no matter how much you sacrifice for the ministry, your gifts can never be compared to that one gift. And because of that indescribable gift, you are actually able to give. After Paul's conversion, he had become he had come to believe that there is only one gift that outdoes all gifts. This gift wasn't just something or just one thing. It was everything. All the coffers of heaven were empty to give this gift that no words can describe. It wasn't an afterthought gift, you know, the one we, we sometimes give to our loved ones when we've forgotten about their birthday and we search in the cupboard for something that we that we that haven't been used yet, or we run to the shop to get something to to save face at the party, or when all else fails, we just give money. No, this gift was planned. John the Revelator says this calls this gift the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Picture yourself preparing a gift for that special person in your life in January already when their birthday is only in December. You go from shop to shop for the perfect gift until you find it. You hide it after wrapping it and writing a special message on it. I think of the excitement, the joy in your heart. If you can do that, you will have a nano of a nano of a nano glimpse of what God went through when he planned this gift. Slain from the foundation of the world. Before this gift was needed, it was sitting there, packaged, all wrapped up in love with planet Earth written on it and the postage all pre-arranged. So Paul doesn't say what the gift is. He doesn't need to mention the gift because everyone knew what it was because this gift is the theme of all Paul's sermons. It's the reason why he was beaten three times with rods by the Romans. It's the reason why he took 39 whippings from the Jews. The reason why he was shipwrecked and spent a night and a day in the open sea. It's the reason why he was often weary, famished, sleep de deprived, suffering at the hand of Jew and Gentile alike. They knew because Paul always uplifted this unspeakable, inexpressible gift to his congregations in all the letters he writes to them. To the Philippians, he mentions that this gift emptied himself, took the form of a slave and was born in human likeness. To the Galatians, he reminds them that they are sons and daughters through faith in this indescribable gift. To the Colossians, he describes this gift as being before all things and having all things consist in him. To the Ephesians, he writes that this gift himself is our peace and that he has broken down the middle wall of separation. To the Hebrews, Paul makes it known that this gift is the high priest who was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, and has become higher than the heavens. And to the church of Rome, he writes that of him and through him and to him are all things, and that we have eternal life because of this gift. Thank God for this inestimable gift, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is through the inestimable gift of Christ that all our blessings come, so says Ellen White, in Sons and Daughters of God on page 238. Furthermore, she says that life, health, friends, reason, happiness are ours through the merits of Christ, end quote. She also says in the same book that there's not an article of food on our tables that he has not provided to sustain us. The stamp and superscription of God is upon it all. Everything is included in 
and abundantly supplied to man through the unspeakable gift, the only begotten Son of God. And then she pleads, oh, that the young and old might realize that all comes to them through the virtue of Christ's life and death and acknowledge the ownership of God. So it is proper to thank God for Jesus. This gift too priceless for words because it is through Jesus that all blessings come to us. One writer says that when Jesus talks about himself as the bread of heaven, the bread that came down from heaven, he doesn't only mean the spiritual food, but the physical as well, so that the believer eats and drinks to the glory of God. The pen of inspiration also reminds us that the thought that Christ died to obtain for us the gift of everlasting life is enough to call forth from our hearts the sincerest and fervent gratitude and from our lips the most enthusiastic praise because every ray of sunshine, every morsel of food, every drop of water is a gift of redeeming love. Everything in nature was made by him and pleased with the sinner to be reconciled with God, to God. That's also from sons and daughters of God. Jesus Christ, the gift that keeps on giving. Into the ceaseless ages of eternity, we will thank God for Jesus and the cross, which was the medium whereby mercy, peace, righteousness, and judgment came together. The greatness of this gift firstly gives us a reason for thanksgiving and praise today and always. And secondly, it should evoke in us a deep desire to give him our all. Like the woman whom Jesus saw at the temple where the offerings were given, we read about her in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 41 uh, to 44. Now, Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which makes a quadrant. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she had out of her poverty put in all she had, her whole livelihood. She gave all. She gave all. And so she gave everything. It's as if she said, my utmost for his highest. God gave everything the highest and best of heaven. So what about us? Will we give him our utmost, our all today, our utmost in service, our utmost in allegiance, our utmost in worship? So if our love language is not receiving gifts, may we on this Thanksgiving Sabbath join Paul in saying hallelujah and thanks be to God for Jesus that indescribable, priceless, unspeakable, precious gift, because in him we live and move and have our being, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, dear Father, for, this, for your marvelous son, Jesus Christ, who loves us so much that he was willing to become sin for us that he came to show us the love of the Father, and then he died to redeem us. Lord, we cannot thank you enough because words utterly fail in expressing our thanks for the unspeakable gift in your Son, Jesus Christ. We love and adore that name, Jesus Christ. Do accept our gratitude today, Lord, before we praise you for all the blessings and answered prayers given to us through your son, Jesus, throughout this week. And, oh, Lord, how you have blessed us through this week. Every message, uh, it was really manna from heaven, and it was tailor-made for every heart this week, this, uh, every morning this week, throughout this week. 
Dear Lord, we, may we go from here today to show our gratitude in the way we live. May we daily, moment by moment, give you our utmost because you have given your highest. For we ask this in the name of the gift above all gifts, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.